Now, you have functions and relations. The first thing you must know is that in the same way that thumb is a finger but not all finger is a thumb, is in the same way that functions are relations but not all relations are functions. You understand that? So every function is a relation coming from relationship, meaning that X have a relationship with Y, but not every um, relation is a function. I'll explain that to you a little more soon. All right, now. So, the relations eh, have a domain and a range. So, therefore, you have in the relations, and remember that all functions are relations. So, when we talk about relation, it includes functions. Everybody understand the logic of that? Yeah. When you say, me have five fingers, it includes thumb. But you can only say you have two thumbs because every thumb is not a finger. You're free. Marilyn, you're free. Mm? Good. So you have the domain and the range. Now you're going to find that the domain is the x axis and the range is the y axis. Everybody see that? Now, if you realize, you see, that one is mapped onto the other one. Now, this here is saying that this have a particular relationship with this. Now, can you tell me what the relationship here? Hmm? So, it seems here that y is equal to half x. Now, why didn't I say x is equal to 2y? Because y is a function of x. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This means that x is a function of y. This means that y is a function of x. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Therefore, y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. Everybody understand that? You don't understand? If them say there is a relation x mapped onto 2x plus 4, it means that y is equal to 2x plus 4. We can draw that on a map. All right, ready now. So this year, is language to say x is mapped onto 2x plus 4, which means that y equals 2x plus 4. You understand that? Yeah. Where x is the domain and y is the range. So therefore, for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, what would y be? Simple. For the first one, y equal 2x plus 4. This implies that y equal 2 bracket 0 plus 4 equal 0 plus 4 equal 4. For the second one, y equal 2x plus 4 equal 2 bracket 1 plus 4 equal to 2 ones 2 plus 4 equal to 6. All right, no problem. No problem. Problem. X is mapped onto 2x plus 4, which means that x goes over to and have a relationship with 2x plus 4. You see? Now, if x is mapped onto 2x plus 4, it means that y equals 2x plus 4. X is the domain, the first circle. And Y is the range, the second circle. Why is it this with an arrow? It means that this is dependent on what this is. Right. Uh, what? 
I mean, now I use four, it's empty. See that? Let them give you the formula. The formula is given to you, 2x plus 4. They tell you that it's mapped onto that. Are you understanding? So now, the first number, x being the independent variable, is given. So they're saying if x is 0, what is y? So, I go, what? Don't worry, just look. So x, I mean, sorry, y is equal to 2x plus 4. Is that true? They gave us that. So y equal 2x plus 4. Everybody see that? Now, if x is 0, because that's all that they're saying here, x is 0. It implies that y equal 2 bracket 0 plus 4 because x is 0. So it equal to... 2, 0, 0 plus 4. It equal 4. If x is equal to 1, then it says y equal 2, x is 1 plus 4. So that means that 2, 1 is 2 plus 4. If x is 2, it means that y equal 2 bracket 2 plus 4 equal 4 plus 4 equal 8. If x is 3, it means that y equal 2 bracket 3 plus 4 equal 6 plus 4 equal 10. If x is 4, it means 2 bracket 4 plus 4 equal to 2 4 is 8 plus 4 equal 12. Yes. What? The formula is given. Are you understanding that? Yes, it finished. What if the relation, it was mapped onto x squared? If x was mapped onto x squared, it implies that y equal to x squared. So zero. One. Two, two. One square at two. One square equal one times one equal one. Two, three, four. See that? If it was mapped onto, x is mapped onto half x times two. Implies that if x is mapped onto half x times 2, y equal half x times 2. 0, 1, 2, 3. How many? Because half something times 2 gave back itself. See that? Half 2 times 2 equal to 1 times 2 equal to if x is 2. If x is 4, half 4 times 2 equal to 2 times 2 equal to 4. You see? Everybody understand that? All right, now go on to write now. Now, a relation is a function once only one number in the domain has a relationship with a number in the range. Are you understanding that? Once only one number in the domain have a relationship with a number in a range. 
So for example, bam, 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 bam. Is that a function? Because one number of a... Suppose it looks enough. Is that a function? Still a function. Because this number, yeah. But if it comes so now to say, how this rag on now? Um, that is not a function. Got two numbers over here, so have a relationship with a number over here. You understand? You get it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. This are zero, four. All right, watch now. It are coming like, oh, you see, if a man have two girls, it don't look so bad. But if a girl have two men, so bad. I don't see culture. So, like, in a certain country now, suppose they live in a Iraq. One man can have nine wives, but one wife cannot have nine husbands. All right, so I'm going to chop off her head. You understand? Now, watch this now. One-to-one -one mapping. Is that a function? Because one number by yourself. Have a relationship with a number by yourself. Watch her now. It is a function. How much relationship four have? Only one. How much relationship eight have? No, eight only have one. See that eight go to four too. So it can work. You see that? You understand that? No, look over here so now. Can that be a function? Because four have two relationships. It can't have two relationships and be a function. So it is only a function if the range, if the domain, I'm sorry, have only one relationship. And the range of the man. You understand? In a this case. But because in real life the range is dependent on the domain, then the domain is the man and the range is the <laughs> I understand that. All right, this is it simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a multiple choice. In a multiple choice. They'll give you a, that and ask if that is a function. If it is a function. You can ask you. No. When I get a map like this, they ask you if it is a function. This is not a function. It is a relation, but it's not a function. But they can give you a function, a mapping, and say, find the relationship. And you'll say, if x is mapped onto 2x, x is mapped onto 2x plus 3. You understand? Mm -hmm. Or they can give you a relationship and tell us if you fill out the bracket, fill out the, the mapping, like I did in the first part. All right, now. Now, it is written like this. X is mapped onto 2X plus 5. What it's saying, therefore, is that F X is mapped onto 2X plus 5. F X equal to 2X plus 5. Now, this fx is not f times x. It is simply a way of writing the function of x. Remember, in a normal life, fx would have mean f times x. But in functions, it simply means a function of x. Are you understanding? So if you see this, x is mapped onto 2x plus 5. It means function. If you see this, 
function of x, x map down to 2x plus 5, it means function. If you say this, fx equal 2x plus 5, it means function. All of these are the same. Are you understanding? Good. Steady mini mini, steady bidi bidi, steady bidi bidi. Eh? <laughs> Yot, don't violate the Yot. All right, now. No. N equal FM. Yes. He might have a baby, that's why. This means that N is a function of M. Therefore, which one is the domain? The range is a function of the domain. You see that? So which one is, a x, is the x-axis? If you draw a graph, which one is the x-axis? The domain is your x-axis. Which one is your y-axis? Which is the range. Are you understanding that? Good. They also use GR as well. Sorry, G. Like I said, we put F to function, they also use G. What this mean? P is a function of R. Which one is the domain? R in our bracket, yo. <laughs> no, yo. That's an R. I said G, yo. <laughs> yo. I told me to be a doctor, you see? Yeah. So that means that R is the? Which is? And P is the? Which is? And G is the? You're a genius. See that? Just listen, yo. They also use H as a representation of function. What that mean? Which one is the domain? What does it mean? S is a function. Domain, x-axis, range, y-axis, function. See that? They also use Sign for function. <laughs> one in a one zero. So you say X No a function see me, I don't say sign. Function. Yeah, no, the angle stays so. So, domain, range, 
function. Everybody see that? You see that? All right, now. So them say, if fx equal to x squared plus 7x minus 5, if fx equal to x squared plus 7x minus 5, find the values of f2 and f minus 1. You blind yo? Plus 7x minus 5, yo. Me <laughs> too. Eh? This is. Yo, two minutes too bright for me to school. Me never pay attention, you see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. F this, or F this, yo. <laughs> see that F, 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 F. On a lucky. All right. F two. If you realize, see the x is replaced by the 2. So all it is replaced 2 for x everywhere. Equals to 2 square plus 7 bracket 2 minus 5. Equal 4 plus 14 minus 5. What bomb does tell you? Equal 18 minus 5. Equal 13. F A N S. F 2 equal 13. See that? About three marks. Huh? Two of them are two questions they marks. About three marks. Huh? F minus one. F minus one equal to Minus 1 squared plus 7 bracket minus 1. Ah, minus 5. Equal minus 1 squared. Oh, it will be negative 1. Any number squared is positive. Because any time the signs are the same when multiplying, the answer must be positive. So you come say, say minus 1 squared equal minus 1 times minus 1. 2 negative. You have positive 1 times 1 equal 1. If you, have, if you do a pair calculator and get minus 1, dash it away. Yes, I, I see that. <laughs> so 1 plus 7 times minus 1. Negative 7. Positive 7. Times negative when the signs are different. The answer is negative when multiplying and dividing. So therefore it is minus 7 minus 5. You see that? So therefore you're going to be equal to. So in time of the seat, so work out one by one. 1 minus 7. What kind of seat? When you come, so I have 1 minus a bigger number. You put a negative, I said a bigger number minus the next one. Equal 6, you see it? Negative 6, you see it? You see that? When you have a little number minus a big number, you put a minus sign, and then you say big number minus little number. So your minus sign comes 7 minus 1, 6. Hey, you know what? A, a big stone? 
When you have minus a front and minus a middle, you put your minus sign and then you say 6 plus 5. Me not tell you that. When you have minus a front and minus a middle, you put your minus and add. Do it on the calculator. If minus there, middle and a bigger number there back, what you do? You put your minus side and turn it round. Minus the little one from the big one. You see that? <laughs> so G X Find G3 and G minus 1. Sorry, G minus 2. G X mapped onto 4X minus 1. Remember, I'm going to tell you, you know, maths is a language. So therefore, this can be translated just like Spanish to English. So this means the function x mapped onto 4x minus 1. Eh? So it implies g bracket x equal 4x minus 1. You see that? Because this and this is the same thing. Everybody see that? Therefore, g3 equal to 4, 3 minus 1 equal to 12 minus 1 equal to 11. A and S, G, 3 equal 11. G, X map onto 4, X minus 1. It implies G, X equal 4, X minus 1. Therefore, G, 3, which them ask us to find, equal 4, 3, Replacing x minus 1. 4 3 is 12 minus 1. 12 minus 1, 11. Answer G3 equal. Because there is no time to guess. This implies G minus 2 equal to 4 bracket minus 2. Minus 1. Equal 4 times negative 2. Minus 8. Minus 1. When minus a front and minus a middle. Minus bracket 8 plus 1. Put that in your calculator and tell me. Like a genie eye. <laughs> a and S, G minus 2 equal minus 9. Let me say, plot a graph. For f x equal to three square huh? what <laughs> yo you see the ball never robot have good yo. <laughs> Plot a graph fx equal to 3x square 
plus 10x minus 8. Yo, so if I want to see that, I want to come. So first of all, oh, sorry, don't do it. Between, between B E T W E E N. Between x equal minus 6 and x equal 4. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Once on the city, it's the first thing I want to do. I want to draw something like this. Bam. 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 X, Y. Now the set here between X equal minus 6 and X equal 4. Yeah. So the first one, minus 6, minus 5, minus 2, sorry, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Because it's a x equal 4. Because it's a x equal minus 6. Because you ask me mad me. <laughs> I ready now. So, you're going to work them so now. Um, f bracket minus 6. You see it? Equal 3 bracket minus 6. One to my marker. Square plus 10. How oh, X lay with your pencil? 10 minus 6 minus 8. Everybody see that? Huh? Fx equal 3x square plus 10x minus 8. So where, F, where x is minus 6, may I say f minus 6 just like how we do earlier. So anyway, there's an x, we are going to put minus 6. So 3x, therefore 3 minus 6 squared. See that? Plus 10x, 10 bracket minus 6. See that? Minus 8. See that? Equal 3, 36, minus 6 square, positive 36. But if you look, it's 3x squared. It's not 3x all squared. It's 3 times x squared. You see that? So if it is a 3 times 6 and square, it would be incorrect. See that? Three x squared is equal to three times x squared. Three x all squared is equal to three x times three x. You see that? See the difference? Ten times minus six. Ten times minus six are four. One boss said, boy. Three times thirty six.
See that? And you do it for all of them. This is about 15 marks. Now, watch this now. Watch this now. Now, carry it over yes or no. Watch this, watch this. Yo, warm to this marker, yo. Y'all yeah, see? You sure that I drive all man? Mind the car, love me. Hey, man, I'm permanent. Oh, man, drive. They, when we write four cuts, I'm going to take four cuts. Oh, okay. All right. Yo, no, could you rub off your son, yo? Where are them done? You are in farmer? The one that kind of small. Oh. Friend, you have a look. All right, ready now? All eyes on the board. Now you realize, they said to us, the function is 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. See, I put it here, 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. See that? Everybody see that? Oh, boy, you see that? Brazilian, put on the phone. So we said 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. Now minus 8 have nothing to do with x. You see that? Oh, you see that? So let me just write it back. Don't worry yourself. See that? Kite have nothing to do with X. No. Thank you. So now we are going to work out 3X squared. This is a rough work when I work it on, right? So now I work it on the rough work. x squared for minus 6 equal 3 bracket minus 6 square 
equal 3 times 36. How much that? 108. Minus 5, 3, bracket minus 5 squared, 3, bracket 25. 3 times 25. How much? What? Minus 4, that's minus 4 squared, 16 times 3. 3 times 16, that are 30 plus 3, 6 is 18, 48. Minus 4 squared, work it out. The minus 3 squared, 3, 3 is 9. So that's a 9 times 3, 3, 9 is 27. Minus 2, that are 4, that are 12. Minus 1, that are 1, that are 3. 0 squared, that are 0. 1 squared, that are 3. 2 squared, that are 12. Um, yo, yo. 3, that are 27. 4, that are... How many know this and this are the same thing? Because minus 4 square and 4 square is the same thing. Minus 2 square and 2 square is the same thing. Minus 50 square and 50 square is the same thing. Because the square root of a number is plus or minus the result. Everybody understand that? Then now we say 10x plus 10x plus 10 times minus 6. Plus 10 times minus 6. That's going to be minus. 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 And that's going to be minus. How do I know? Because the sign is different. So let just write the minus quick and fast. 10 times 6. 10 times 5. 40. 30. 20. 10. 10 times 0. That's going to be plus. 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 Oh, no, they might be plus. Because the signs are the same. 10 times 1. Yo, make sure you don't do the second row. You know. First row. Next thing is 10 times 30. Ten times two. Ten times three. All you know is say one o eight minus sixty minus eight. Shall give you forty. See if you have some more, you put a double line. For sure, say I don't know. All I say now, 75 minus 50 minus 8. That's a 25 minus 8. That's a 25 minus 5. That's a 17. 48 minus 40 minus 8. 27 minus 30 minus 8. That's a 38. That's a minus 11. 28 minus 12. At a minus 14, minus 16. Um, 18 minus 3, that a minus 15. Eight minus zero, minus eight. 13 minus eight, five. Um, 20 minus eight, that's a 12, 24. Huh? Is that what? 57 minus 8, that's going to be 49. And 88 minus 8. So you're going to say no. After you write that now, see underneath that, underneath that, you're going to say, it implies, it 
minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. One, two, three, four. We well, minus six map on to forty. We well, minus five map on to We at? Hey, you must have for we See that? Then now you draw your graph. Yo. Which one is the x-axis? The x-axis is always the low line. The y-axis is always your high rise. So your y-axis is your high rise, and your x-axis is your ground. See that? Now, my x-axis is my domain, and my y-axis is my range. So my domain needs minus one sorry from your negative it have a form of t ah uh, analyze the thing first right so these are 5 10 15 20 all right these are zero 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. 80. 80, yes, all right? <laughs> this now is minus 1. Minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? Everybody see that? We have a graph. What is minus 6 on the x axis is mapped onto what? So minus 6 is mapped onto 40. See that? You don't have to draw a line because your graph people have a line. What is minus 5 mapped onto? So this is 17, but yes, I do Map onto minus 5. Minus 4 is mapped onto what? So minus 4 is mapped onto 0, which means that it's on a line. Minus 3. Minus 11. So minus 3 is mapped onto minus 11, which is about here, so. Everybody see what I do? Minus 2. Minus 2 is mapped onto minus 16. It's about here, so. Come again. Minus 1. Mapped onto 15. It's about here, so. 0. It's mapped onto minus 8. Which is on the line. About here, so. 1. It's mapped onto positive 5, which is about here, so. 2. 24, which is about here, so. 3.
49, which is about a year or so. And what for? Is up here, so. All I do now, I just join your, your thing then. Bam, bam, bam. Watch out, curve, left it. Bam, 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 bam. Ah, bam. This is your. <laughs> <laughs> on my graph paper, it will look much sexier. You see that? That is your graph as mapped by your function. So it's simple. That is 15 marks. Um, reciprocal function. Now, reciprocal, remember we teach on this? The reciprocal of a number is simply 1 over the number. What is the reciprocal of 2? Reciprocal of 2 equal a half. What is the reciprocal of a half? Who said that? The reciprocal of a number is 1 over a number. So the reciprocal of 2 is simply 1 over 2. The reciprocal of a half is equal to 1 over a half, which implies 1 divided by a half, which implies 1 times 2 over 1, which implies 1 times 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. Show me, I'll show you. Logics. I understand. What's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? Snapchat forces. Equal 1 over 3 over 2. Equal 1 divided by 3 over 2. Equal to 1 times 2 over 3. Equal 1 times 2 over 3. Equal to 2 over 3. So if y equal 4 over x, hmm? this is a reciprocal function because it suggests that x is mapped onto k over x, where k is the variable, the constant. So if y equal 4 over x, what is the reciprocal function negative 4? Where f bracket negative 4 equal to? Huh? Huh? 4 over minus 4. 1 over minus 1. Minus 1. Everybody see that? If y equals 4 over x, it implies that the function of x equal to 4 over x because the function of x is y. You see that? This implies that f minus 4 is equal to 4 over minus 4 is equal to 4 into 4 one time, 4 into 4 one time, 1 over minus 1. No, because the signs are different, the result is going to be negative, and 1 into 1 is 1 time. See that? If y equal to x to the minus 2, 
then it means that y is equal to 1 over x squared. You understand that? Remember indices? Anything raised to a negative power means that what? It is 1 over the thing. So x to the minus 2 is equal to 1 over x squared. Same topic. You understand? So therefore, if they say that y is equal x to the minus 2, fx, sorry, f2, then it is equal to, f2 is equal to, um, 2 to the minus 2 is equal to 1 over 2 square is equal to a quarter. Everybody understand that? All right, good. You remember indices? Do you remember indices? No. When something is raised to a negative power, it suggests that that thing is actually 1 over the same thing to the power. So if x to the minus 2 is 1 over x squared, then f2 means that it is equal to 2 to the minus 2 equal to 1 over 2 squared equal to a quarter. Boy, sit down in our seat. It's something very directly. If them say this very directly as that, if x, if y varies directly as x, then y is equal to kx, where k is the variable. So therefore, this is usually written y varies directly as x. Now, let me find one. If x is directly proportional All right, sorry. If y is directly proportional to x and y equal 2 when x equal 5, find the value of y when x equal 6. If something is directly proportional or varies directly, then that something equals to kx. So if y varies direct proportionally directly with x, sign, that's I sign. So if y varies direct proportionally to x, it means that y equals to kx. Are you understanding? Where k is a constant. Eh? So if they say to us that y varies directly with x and y equal 2 when x equal 5, it implies that 2 equal to k5. You see that? Huh? y is 2 and x is 5. You see that? So therefore, k5 equal 2. So k equal to 2 over 5. Now that I know k, if they ask me a question, find y when x equals 6. So therefore, if x equals 6, it implies that y equal to 
kx y equal to k6, where k equal 2 over 5. This implies that y equal 2 over 5 bracket 6, y equal 2 over 5 times 6 over 1 equal to 12 over 5. y equal 2 and 2 over 5. If y is proportional to x square, which means that y varies directly as x square, then it implies that y varies directly as x square, implies that y equal to k, x square. Everybody understand that? Now, if it is inversely related, if it is inversely related, then y equals to k over x. So it is, if it is directly related, then y equals to kx. If it is inversely related, y equal to k over x. You see that? Good. So therefore, I'm going to give you one here. S varies inversely as p. S equal 4 when p equal 3. So what do we know? We know that S equal K over P because it tells us it varies inversely. So S equal 4, where S equal 4 and P equal what? It implies that 4 equal to K over 3. K over 3 equal 4 which implies that k equal 4 times 3, which implies that k equal 12. Everybody see that? Since k equal 12, if what does it know? If S equals 16, it implies that 16 equal K over P. 16 equal 12 over P. 12 over P equal 16. 12 equals 16p. 16p equal 12. p equal 12 over 16. p equal 12 over 16. 1. No, 12 over 16. 16. A and S. Everybody see that? All right. When you have variation, you can vary directly or you can vary inversely. So you can have an inverse variation or a direct variation. Both of them have a formula to represent that variation. If it varies directly, then y equal to xk. Understand? If it varies inversely, then y equal to k over x. You understand that? So if they tell us that something varies inversely, let's say, they must give you Two known variables. So it varies inversely, right? And S equal 4 when P equal 3. 
So we know that the relationship is inverse and S equal 4 when P equal 3. So the first step is to find K, which is the, is the decider of the outcome. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The level of variation is based on what K is. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So therefore, if it varies, we need to find that K, since S, which is 4, equal to K over 3, then it implies that K over 3 equal to 4. Come on and get the K over this side. Therefore, 3, which is a divide 3, come over here so as a multiply. And so therefore, K is equal to 12. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So in the formula, S equal K over P, we know that K is equal to 12. Since K equal 12, if S is 16, then it means that S equal K over P, where S is 16. So 16 equal K over P. You see that? See that? Therefore, 16 equal 12 over P because K is 12. You see that? See that? So therefore, 12 over P equals 16. P is below the line, which is a divide P. So we want to carry it over, it comes as a multiply P. So that means that 12 equal to 16 P. I care about my 16 P equal 12. That means that P equal 12 divided by 16, because this is a multiply 16. Come over here as a divide 16, which can be broken down 4 into 12 3 times, 4 into 16 4 times. P equal 3 quarter. Inverse function. No. If the function is inverse, it means that the range is the domain and the domain is the range. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No. In this case, x, y, if inverse means y, x. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So therefore, if the function stay like this, where this is the range, this is the domain, and that is the range, if we want the inverse, we have to interchange the domain and the range. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Everybody understand? You understand? Anybody don't understand? Oh. Were you not looking? <laughs> Who that? <laughs> yeah, but you're not in, in the grade, my son. We can use that and plot a graph, correct? In fact, what? Yeah. In fact, we can draw this up. So. One, two, three. Three, four. No, I think I wrote it incorrectly. Oh, yes, yes. Three, six, four. See that? Everybody see that? The inverse would mean 3, 1, 6, 2, 4, 3, which means this. 3, 6, 4, 1, 2, 3. See that? And does everybody see that? Simple. Very, very simple. All right. So therefore, if you are asked, <clears throat> mm. 
if I have the function fx equal 3x plus 1, and they say to me, find f inverse, first step, you say that since fx equal y, it implies that y equal to 3x plus 1. Everybody see that? Because y is a function of x. So since that now, so y equal 3x plus 1. Once you reach y equal 3x plus 1, you're going to put y everywhere that x is and put x everywhere that y is. So that means uh, this implies that f inverse, f inverse implies that x equal to 3y plus 1. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because the range is now the domain, and the domain is now the range. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Good. Once you're here now, you simply solve back for x. So, for y. So therefore, 3y plus 1 equal to x. That means that 3y equal to x minus 1, which means that y equal to x minus 1 over 3. A and S, f inverse equal to x minus 1 over 3. So f minus 1, x minus 1 over 3 is the inverse of fx, meaning 3x plus 1. Want to see how that's simple? Let me go to the next one. F3, F2 inverse, and F inverse 2. All right. If Fx equal to 3x minus 5 over x plus 2, it implies that f3 equal to 3 bracket 3 minus 5 over 3 plus 2. Everybody see that? Implies 9 minus 5 over 5 implies 4 over 5. A and S, F3, equal 4 over 5. Everybody see that? Where do B now? B. Eyes on the board. Eyes on the board. Since fx equal y, it implies that y equal to 3x minus 5 over x plus 2. This implies that f inverse equals to Sorry, f inverse implies you switch out all x with all y's. Y x equal 
3y minus 5 over y plus 2. You see that? Therefore, 3y minus 5 over y plus 2 equal x. This implies that 3y minus 5 equal to x bracket y plus 2. Everybody see that? Because the y plus 2 under here, so you have to carry it over here. So. Everybody see that? Good. That means that 3y minus 5 equal to xy plus 2. Everybody see that? All right. So therefore, 3y equal to xy plus 2 plus 5. Everybody see that? Call the minus 5, come over. Everybody see that? Sorry. Sorry. X times Y is XY, and these are 2X. X times 2. You see that? Because if it's in the bracket, the two things then, it have to multiply both things in the bracket. So let me say that, so. Hmm? X, Y plus 2X plus 5. What may I try to find? Huh? May I try to find back Y, not you? Not you? So therefore, may I go carry now my X, Y come over here. So, so 3Y minus X, Y equal to 2X plus 5. Everybody see that? Because it's a plus X, Y. So I carry it over here so as a minus. No, when I reach right, that's a way do. Factorize. You know see that? What is the same here? So that give me now 3 minus x equal to 2x plus 5. You see that? If you are trying to solve for something and you have more than one of it, you factorize. You understand? So that means that y equal to 2x plus 5 over 3 minus x. Do you understand that? Everybody understand that? Who don't understand? Why? Be yourself, no man. You're not at the level to understand, okay? Huh? Everybody get that? What? Everybody understand that? No. If you say F inverse 2, F inverse 2, all you do is to find F inverse, which is this, and put 2 wherever X is. So that implies 2 bracket 2 plus 5 over 3 minus 2 equal 4 plus 5 over 1 equal 9 over 1 equal 9. A N S F inverse 2 equal to 9. Everybody understand? No one want no? X minus 5 over X plus 2. Write down, write down the real number. Write down the real number that cannot be in the domain for that function. Write down the real number that cannot be in the domain for that function. 
What is the domain? What is the domain? The domain is the values of x. The range is the values of y. So if them say write down what cannot be in the domain, then it's saying what cannot be x. Which number cannot be x? Once you have a fraction, yes, then the denominator cannot be equal to zero. Because dividing by zero gives you a mathematical impossibility. Divide by zero for your calculator. Any number you want. Choose a number. Everybody, take out on the calculator. Choose a number. Divide it by zero. Divide the number where you choose by zero. Where you get? Is a mathematical impossibility. So therefore, if you have this year being a fraction really, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. So therefore, if you want a number that can't be in the domain, then you say that the number that can't be in the domain is the number that cos x plus 2 to equal to zero. Because x plus 2 equal to 0, it can't work out. You see it? Everybody understand that? So therefore, x equals 0 minus 2. Minus 2 cannot be in the domain for this function. Can you see it simple? That's just logics. Everybody understand so far? Everybody understand so far? Is there anybody that don't understand? All right. 4x plus 5 over x plus 2 equal 3. Four x plus five over fine x. Yeah, fine x. Watch this. Who want to get rid of this from below the line so I carry it above the line? So four x plus five equal to three bracket x plus two. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? Then now we say. 4x plus 5 equal to 3x plus 6. Everybody see that? 3 times x, 3x, 3 times 2, 6. So 4x minus 3x, you see it? Equal to 6 minus 5. All right, watch this now. 4x equal to 3x. Plus 6 minus 5. See that? So 4x equal to 3x plus 1. See that? So therefore, 4x minus 3x, because it's a plus 3x, equal 1. You see that? Everybody see that? So that means that x equal 1. What happened? What happened? Everybody see that? Huh? Everybody understand that? Ready now? We are going to use, we are, you see, it equal 1. We are going to use your inverse function to find it. Watch it now. Let me give it this. Let me say use f inverse to find the value of x. So you're going to say, since fx equals y, it implies that y equals to 4x plus 5 over x plus 2. This implies 
F inverse implies x equal to 4, y plus 5 over y plus 2. 4, y plus 5 over y plus 2 equal x. 4y plus 5 equal x bracket y plus 2 <coughs> implies, implies. This implies that 4y plus 5 equal to xy plus 2x. 4y equal to xy <coughs> plus 2x minus 5. 4y minus xy equal to 2x minus 5. What are we going to do here? So forget y. Factorize. So y bracket 4 minus x equal 2x minus 5 y equal 2x minus 5 over 4 minus x. What do they say that the function equal to? What do they say it equal to? It equal to 3, do no? So then you have to find f inverse 3. Therefore, f inverse 3 equals to 2 bracket 3 minus 5 over 4 minus bracket 3 equals 6 minus 5 over 4 minus 3. Equal 1 over 1. A and S equal 1. Everybody see that? What is equal here, sir? Composite function is the combination of two functions. Very, very simple. This is so simple. It is just so simple. It is so simple that it is simple. Give me two functions. <laughs> I said give me two functions. F. X is mapped onto 2x plus 5, and g, x is mapped onto half x. Good? A composite function means that they're going to find fg. Two functions join together. So FG now, FG mapped onto X is going to be equal to, you take your first function, 2X plus 5, and you're going to put, this is half X, wherever you see X, you put your total G function. So FXG equal to, 2 bracket half x plus 5 equal to 1, one x. So that is x plus 5. 2 times a half, no 1. Done. <laughs> Now, suppose they said to you, find GF. If you're finding GF, it is mapped onto X equal, what is G? Half, and you put the total F, 2X plus 5. You see that? That is equal to half 2X, that is what? x plus 5 over 2 is really equal to x plus 2.5.
Sorry, no, not over 2. I'm lying. X plus 2.5. Because you have to half the 5 too. Okay, in the bracket. Everybody see that? <laughs> no, if you realize, if you realize G of F, is not equal to f of g. Everybody see that? Where was it again that I was? F. Yo, no low, me man. Hey, I'm not near time for the internet. Ready now? Find FG. Now, what you are going to do for find FG is anywhere that you see X in the function F, you're going to put the total function G. So it's going to be FG equal to 2 bracket 3X plus 2 minus 1. Equal to 6X plus 4 minus 1 equal to 6X plus 3. See that? Find FG. I mean, find G of F. G of F equal in the function G, 3x plus 2. Anyway, X, you're going to put all of F. 2x. Minus 1 plus 2 equal to 6x minus 3 plus 2 equal to 6x minus 1. So if you realize g of f, it is not equal to f of g. So g of f is not equal to f of g. Now, if they ask you to find G of F all inverse, G of F inverse, what that mean? It means you have to find the inverse of F and then combine it with G. G of F all inverse is a different thing. Everybody understand that? So therefore, G F inverse means that only the F is inverse. G of F all inverse means that you find the composite of G F and then you inverse it. Now, G of F all inverse is equal to G inverse F inverse. That means you can inverse G, inverse F, and then you put them together. Everybody understand that? All right. That is it. <laughs>